Hey, welcome to another episode of DoCast. In this episode, we're going to go over getting your Git repository initiated and pushing up your Rails application to your Bitbucket account. So in the last episode, I asked you to go ahead and get started with Bitbucket. Go to bitbucket.org, create a free account, and add your SSH key here. If you're not sure how to get to your SSH key, click on this icon in the upper right-hand corner, and then head to Manage Account. Once in Manage Account, go to Security, SSH Keys, and it'll bring you this SSH Keys page. And uh, you can learn how to generate an SSH key here. All right, so I set up my SSH key here. And uh, what we need to do now is we need to go to repositories and we need to create a repository for our Rails application. So clicking on create repository will take us to a create new repository page where we can go ahead and I'll just type in Rails app. That'll be my repository name. I'm not going to give it a description here. It's going to be using Git as my version control and the language is going to be in Ruby. All right, so next we'll go ahead and we'll create this repository. And you'll notice that we now have an empty repository where we can go ahead and put some files into here. So first thing we'll do is we'll click on the command line. We'll click on I have an existing project. And you'll see the commands that we should go ahead and run on our computer. So the first one we want to do is we want to change to our application path which we pretty much are in because we're working in that. Then we run get remote add. This is the command here. Origin will be the name of the remote. Then we have the URL to the remote bucket. After that, we'll run get push u origin all. And that pushes up the repo and all its refs for the first time. Next, we'll push up all the tags. Um, so what I like to do is I use a git shortcut that's provided by OhMyZSH. If you haven't installed OhMyZSH, I totally recommend it. Since we're already within the directory, we're just going to add the git remote origin. So I'll type in git remote add origin. And then we'll take the URL here. So we'll grab that git bucket URL. We'll paste it in here. And then we get an error. And the error is because I haven't initialized git. So this is the first thing that you need to do with the application is you need to initialize get using get init. And what that will do is it will create an empty git repository for you. And that repository basically doesn't have any files associated with, with it yet. Um, so we're going to have to add those files and we can check that using git status. And it will display all the files within our directory here. And you notice that I use get status but as a shorthand again this is a oh my zsh alias here it's one of the plugins and basically if i go ahead and i type in alias gst i'll be able to see what exactly it means so it's get status it's the same thing as running get status it gives me the same output here but again it's shorthand and i just love oh my zsh anyhow with that said we'll go ahead and we'll add all so we'll get at all I'm so used to using those shortcuts here get at all now that those are added we'll see that if we use the get status here we'll see that now it's green so the files are now staged for you to go ahead and commit them so if I scroll up here we'll see that now we can commit these files it has the new file here and if we were to change any of these files and we wanted to re-add them, we would just run git add all. With these on staging, we can now commit them. And I'll use one of the git aliases that I have here, which is git commit with message. And if we go ahead and see what that is, we'll see that it's git commit dash m. So that's getting all of these files within the staging. And then we're going to commit them as changes to our local repo. GC message. And then I'll just type in initial commit, right? And that will tell Git to create all of these files for this initial commit. Awesome. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and see a log of our commits, we can type in git log. So the first thing you'll see is the commit hash. Then it's going to give us the author of that commit, when this commit was done, and the message that was given on this commit. Okay, then if I click on Q on my keyboard, it'll exit me out of that. Now, we'll go ahead and we'll git add the remote origin and then we'll copy and paste in that repo URL here oops I mixed that up so it's get let's get remote add it's not get add remote get remote add origin and then we type in that URL now to verify that we went ahead and added that remote repo 
we can go ahead and run remote get remote dash v and it's going to give us the um, name of the remote repo and its URL where we can push and fetch changes committed to this repo. So cool. We can go ahead and we can push to our remote directory. So I'll get push origin master. And this is going to give me an errored out result just because it's um, not currently associated with my default SSH key. And this is no big deal because I actually use um, a multitude of SSH keys to go ahead and connect with external uh, servers and VPSs, droplets, etc. cetera, um, our clients, my third-party repo, um, cloud hosting sites, and things like that. What I want to show you is I just want to show you a piece of that, and I want you to focus on on this and this is what we'll cover in the future um, but what I need to do is I need to add in a remote branch that's gonna interact with my bitbucket underscore do casts host name here so what I'll have to do is I'll pull up our current get remotes and I'll see that we currently have origin at this URL here what I need to do is I need to create a get remote add and I'm just going to put origin2 uh, just so it's similar to origin. I'm going to paste in that URL but I'll take away bitbucket.org and I'll replace it with bitbucket underscore docasts. And this will tell SSH to go ahead and reference the config file. Look for the host bitbucket underscore docasts with the host name that's going to be given so this is what we just took away and it's going to tell him to look for the identity file or the SSH key and then to only use identities so to only use this with the username and this is my username for Bitbucket so after I add this I should be able to push to my origin to master and that will allow me to go ahead and push up to my Bitbucket repo so I'll clear this out and let's go ahead and see what we have here. So we have our git remote. We now have that added. Great. Let's now try to push to our origin2. I got to remember to put 2 there. Git push origin2 master. It's going to ask me for the password for my SSH key here. And um, it's going to go ahead and it's going to push all that up to my repo. Great. So it worked that time. If I go into Bitbucket here now, and I refresh this page, it should show that I have one branch and that I just committed one commit. Great. So if we take a look at that one commit, we should see the files that were committed. I'll scroll down and I'll see all the file changes here. If you want to, you can take a look at the files. And from here on out, Git will go ahead and keep track of the individual changes within these files. And I highly recommend that if you're using a version control system like Git, that you commit changes for every single feature that you go ahead and implement. And this allows you to go ahead and roll back your changes in case you make a mistake. Let's go over the commands that we just went over. So the first thing that you want to do when working with Git is you want to initialize your Git repo, so that your local repo, and you use Git init to do that. Then you want to go ahead and you want to add all of your changes to staging for your first commit. So to do that, you would get add dash dash all. And that'll allow you to add all the changes here. Then you can go ahead and get commit. And I recommend doing it with a message. You would put your message between quotes, your message here. Then you can go ahead and add your get remote origin with the URL that's provided. And last but not least, you would go ahead and you would push your changes to your origin master branch, right? So those are the four main Git commands that you'll likely use once you get started with Git. Now again, you can use one of the Git clients. The free one, which is source tree, is provided by Bitbucket here. So I believe if you scroll all to the bottom, click on source tree, it should take you to the source tree app.com where you can download their client here for Git and get everything set up that way. Or you can check out a paid client, which is the one I use. So I use Tower 2. You can currently download a free 30-day trial if you would like to. That way you can compare it with the free version of Source Tree app and the paid version of Tower 2. 
If you'd like to learn more about Git, I'd recommend going to git-scm.com. You can download the pro Git book for free or you can read it online. So this is an awesome resource to have. It's a bit advanced when you're reading through it, but the more you use Git, the more you'll get the hang of it. And again, I recommend starting with a Git client like this. This is actually how I started. I knew the basics that we just went over and then I expanded from there using a client anytime I got stuck and things just got easier from there. Now Tower 2 offers a learning center where you can go to learn here and they offer a webinar where you can go ahead and learn more about Git and version control. So in this learning center, if you scroll down, you can check out their ebook, you can check out their video course, or you can check out their webinar. This is really good content for you to get familiar with Git. We'll use Git a lot within our future episodes, so definitely get down the basics. Now that we've added our Rails app to our repo, in our next episode, we'll continue with getting ready for our deployment by installing some of the gems that we need to deploy with and by prepping our droplet for deployment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.